It's me, Caesar the Circle Lake, talking to you about measuring angles and arcs. We always use angles when we're firing our bow and arrows at the evil humans. First thing we're talking about is a central angle. That's an angle whose vertex is the center of the circle. So if we're looking at our example down here, we have an angle D, G, E, where point G, the vertex of our angle, is the center of the circle. Because of that, this angle right here would be considered a central angle of circle G. The second vocabulary term is an arc. That's a part of the circumference of a circle. Now, if you recall, the circumference of a circle is just the perimeter of the circle. It's the length of one revolution around the circle. An arc is just going to be a part of that circumference. So here, arc DE is just a part of the circumference of circle G. Arc EAD, again, much bigger than arc DE, but it's still just a part of the circumference of circle G. Now, a minor arc would be an arc with a measure less than 180 degrees. So if you recall, there are 360 degrees in a circle, meaning that there would be 180 degrees in a semicircle or half of a circle. So if a given arc is less than half of a circle, for instance, arc DE right here, we would know that that arc would be considered a minor arc because its measure would be less than 180 degrees. Now, a major arc would be an arc with a measure greater than 180 degrees. Again, there are 360 degrees in a circle, meaning there are 180 degrees in a semicircle. So if you have an arc greater than a semicircle, for instance, arc EAD here, that would be considered a major arc. And note that this arc that we just talked about, arc EAD, has three letters in it, three points. And the reason is because it's telling you which point to start at, which point to go through, and then which point to end at. Now, a semicircle, we just talked about this. It's an arc equal to half of a circle or measuring 180 degrees. Again, there are 360 degrees in a circle, meaning that half of that must be 180. So if you ever have an arc measuring 180 degrees, that would be considered a semicircle. So in this particular instance, that would be arc AD or arc AD. Now, the arc addition postulate says the measure of the arc formed by two adjacent arcs is the sum of the measures of the two arcs. So we've had the segment addition postulate, we've had the angle addition postulate, and now we have the arc addition postulate. And they all mean the same thing. The sum of the parts equal the whole. So in this particular instance, if we add together two smaller arcs, it should equal the larger arc that is comprised of both of those arcs. So arc DE plus arc EA should equal arc DEA. That's what the arc addition postulate it says. Now the arc length formula says the length of an arc of a circle is equal to the measure of the central angle divided by 360 times the circumference of the circle or x over 360 times 2 pi r or x over 360 times pi d. So what this is saying is say you don't want to calculate the entire circumference. You just want a portion of the circumference, a length of an arc. So in this case, the length of arc DE. What you're going to do is you're going to take the measure of the central angle of that arc. That would be this angle right here. Divide it by 360 and then multiply that by the circumference of the circle, 2 pi r. Now, where did this formula come from? Think about it. If I just want a fraction of the circumference, what I'm going to do is take the circumference and multiply it by a fraction. And that fraction is just whatever portion of 360 that this arc represents. That would be this number over 360. So it's giving you a fraction of the circumference. You learn about circles while I go destroy the humans. It's example time. Now example one says find the measure of each arc given segment AD is a diameter of circle G. So the first thing you want to do is find the measure of arc AB. Now it's important to note that the measure of an arc and the length of an arc are two separate things. The length of an arc is a portion of the circumference, whereas the measure of the arc is equal to the measure of the central angle that makes up that arc. So in this particular instance, we want to find the measure of arc AB, this minor arc right here, which is equal to the measure of the central angle that makes up that arc, which would be angle AGB. So what is the measure of angle AGB? That would be 60 degrees. Therefore, the measure of arc AB is also 60 degrees. Part B, we want to find the measure of arc ABC, which is this minor arc right here. So how do we find the measure of arc ABC? Well, again, the measure of arc ABC is equal to the measure of the central angles that make up arc ABC, which would be angle AGB right here and angle GBC right here. If we add together those two measures, we should get the measure of arc ABC. Well, we know the measure of angle AGB is 60 degrees, so that goes in here. What about the measure of angle BGC? Well, that would be this angle right here. Well, if we know that segment A 
AD right here is a diameter of circle G, then we know that this angle plus this angle plus this angle have to form a straight line, meaning that their measures add up to 180 degrees. So I take 180 degrees, subtract 90 degrees, subtract 60 degrees, I'm left with the measure of angle BGC, which is 30 degrees. Now all I have to do to find the measure of arc ABC is add together these two angle measures, and I get that the measure of arc ABC is 90 degrees. Lastly, we want to find the measure of arc ACD. Since segment AD right here is a diameter of circle G, we know that arc ACD must be a semicircle, meaning that its measure must be equal to 180 degrees. So you can put that right away, or you could say that the measure of this arc must be equal to the sum of the measures of the central angles that make it up. So I could say that the measure of angle AGC right here, this 90 degree angle over here, plus the measure of angle CGD, this 90 degree angle over here, have to add together to equal the measure of arc ACD, which would be 180 degrees, like we just said. You guys know King Kong? He's my brother! You try it! Okay, doing the same thing, except this time I have circle V with a diameter segment PS. So the first thing I want to do is find the measure of arc STQ. So arc STQ would be this minor arc right here because its measure is less than 180 degrees. How do I find that measure? Well, again, the measure of an arc we find by adding together the measures of the central angles that make up that arc. So in this case, arc STQ is made up of angle SVT and angle TVQ. If I add together the measures of those central angles, I should get the measure of arc STQ, which is 115 degrees. Next, we're going to find the measure of arc PRT. So arc PRT would be this major arc right here because it's greater than 180 degrees. So how do I find the measure of that major arc? Well, again, the measure of an arc is equal to the sum of the measures of the central angles that make it up. So the measure of arc PRT would be equal to the measure of angle PVR plus the measure of angle RBS plus the measure of angle SVT. Well, we know the measure of angle SVT SVT is 72 degrees. That goes in here. We know the measure of angle RVS is 90 degrees. That's going to go in here. What's the measure of angle PVR? Well, since segment PS is a diameter of circle V, I know that these two angles right here must then be a linear pair because they're two adjacent angles that form a straight line, meaning they must be supplementary. So I take 180 degrees, subtract 90. I'm left with the measure of angle PVR, which is 90 degrees. So I add up these three angle measures and I get that the measure of arc PRT is going to be equal to 250 degrees. Lastly, I want to find the measure of arc QPR. So arc QPR would be this minor arc right here because its measure is less than 180 degrees. So how do I find the measure of this arc? Well, again, the measure of an arc is equal to the sum of the measures of the central angles that make it up. So it'd be equal to the measure of angle QVP plus the measure of angle PVR. Well, I know the measure of angle PVR is 90 degrees, so that's going to go in there. But what about the measure of angle QVP? Well, again, because we know segment PS is a diameter of circle V, we know that the these angles right here form a straight line, meaning that they are supplementary, meaning that these three angles add together to equal 180. So if I take 180 degrees, subtract 43 degrees, subtract 72 degrees, I'm left with the measure of angle QVP, which is 65 degrees. So I can now plug that in over here, add these two angles together, and I get that the measure of arc QPR is equal to 155 degrees. Example two says find the length of arc AB, round answer to the nearest hundred. So note, this time I am finding the length of arc AB, not the measure of arc AB. So my answer is not going to be in terms of degrees, it's going to be in terms of feet because it's going to be a portion of the circumference. So how do I find the length of an arc? I use the arc length formula, which is x over 360, the measure of our central angle over 360, times the circumference of our circle, which is 2 pi r, or pi d. In this particular instance, I could use pi d as the circumference of the circle over here, where I just plug in 24.6 for D. Or I could use 2 pi r and just convert this diameter into two separate radii by dividing it by 2. Now let's fill out this formula. So x over 360. Remember, x is the measure of the central angle associated with this arc. So where's arc AB? Arc AB would be this minor arc right here because its measure is less than 180 degrees. So what is the measure of the central angle associated with arc AB? That would be the measure of angle AGB, which is 60 degrees, meaning the measure of arc AB is going to be equal to 60 degrees. So I'm going to plug in 60 for x. Then I'm going to multiply that by 2 pi r. And remember, r is going to be the radius of this circle, which we found is 12.3 feet. So I can plug that in there. 
Now, the cool thing about this question is it says round your answer to the nearest hundredth, meaning you could just plug all of this into your calculator right now since there are no more variables. When you do that, just round it to do decimal places and you have your answer. Or if you want to simplify it because you love math so much, you could take 60 over 360, simplify that to 1 sixth, take 12.3, multiply that to the 2 and get 24.6, then multiply the pi on at the end. Then you could take 1 sixth, multiply that to the 24.6, and that simplifies to 4.1 pi. Now, this would be the exact length of arc AB. But again, this doesn't want the exact arc length. It wants your answer rounded to the nearest hundred, which means in your calculator, you're going to take 4.1, multiply it to pi, and then round that to two decimal places. And you get that the arc length for arc AB is approximately equal to 12.88 feet. Again, you could have saved yourself this trouble by just plugging this all into your calculator, and you would have got the same thing. Caesar knows you love circles as much as he does, so you try it. Okay, doing the same thing, except this time we want to find the length of arc CDE. So arc CDE would be this major arc right here. Well, in order to find the length of an arc, we want to use the arc length formula, which is arc length is equal to the measure of your central angle over 360, x over 360, times the circumference of your circle, 2 pi r, or pi d. In this particular instance, we are given a radius, so we can take that radius and plug it in for r right here. Now, the question is, what is the measure of our central angle for arc CDE? Well, that would be this arc right here, meaning I need to figure out what this reflex angle in here is. So how do I do that? Well, I take 360, I subtract 123 degrees, and I get that this angle in here is 237 degrees, meaning the measure of arc CDE is equal to 237 degrees. So I can plug that in for x right here. Again, this question wants you to round your answer to the nearest hundredth, which is two decimal places. So what you could do is just take all of this, plug it into your calculator, and round that to two decimal places. Or if you want to, you could simplify it a little bit further by taking this 5, multiplying it to the 2 pi, and then multiplying it in your calculator and getting that the approximate length of arc CDE is 35.82 inches. Now, example three says the graph shows the results of a survey taken by students at Huntington Beach High School regarding their favorite types of movies. So part eight wants you to find the measure of arc AE. So remember, we're trying to find the measure of this arc, not the length of the arc, meaning our answer should be in degrees. And you get that degree measure by looking at the measure of the central angle associated with that arc. So since we're looking at the measure of arc AE, this minor arc right here, we're looking at this particular central angle right here. But the only problem is we're not given any angle measures in here. The the only thing we're given is percentages of the circle that each of these arcs make up. So how are we supposed to find the measure of arc AE in this case? Well, if we know that there are 360 degrees in a circle, and we know that this arc right here, arc AE, makes up 30% of that circle, then can't we just find 30% of 360 degrees? And wouldn't that make up the measure of arc AE? Yeah. So how do we find 30% of 360? Well, if you recall, anytime you want to take the percentage of a number, you just multiply that number by that percent as a decimal. So 30% as a decimal is 0.3. So I'm going to take 0.3 and multiply it by 360. And I get that the measure of arc AE right here has to be 108 degrees. Part B says find the measure of arc BCD. So arc BCD would be this minor arc right here. And we want to find the measure of this arc, meaning our answer should be in terms of degrees again. So we're going to do the exact same thing that we did with arc AE, only this time we're using arc BCD, meaning we have to add together these two percentages right here and then take that percentage of 360 degrees. So arc BCD is comprised of this 20% and this 20%, meaning arc BCD would make up 40% of our circle. So what is 40% of 360? Well, you take 40% as a decimal, 0.4, multiply it by 360, and you get that the measure of arc BCD is 144 degrees. I have a tail. You don't, so you try. Okay, doing the same thing, except this time it says the graph shows the results of a survey taken by students at Huntington Beach High School regarding their favorite sports. And we want to find the measure of arc LMN. So arc LMN would be this minor arc right here. So again, we are given percentages of the circle. We're not given any angle measures. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to figure out what percentage of the circle does arc LMN make up. We're going to take that percentage as a decimal and we're going to multiply it by 360 degrees. That'll give us the measure of arc LMN. So what percentage of the circle does arc arc LMN make up? Well, it would be this 12% plus this 11%, so that would be 23%. So we're going to take 23% of 360 degrees, meaning we're going to take 23% as a decimal, which is 0.23, multiply it to 360, and we get that the measure of arc LMN is 82.8 degrees. 
Part B, doing the same thing, but this time with arc MPR. So arc MPR would be this major arc right here. So how do I find the measure of that major arc? Well, again, I'm going to figure out what percentage of the circle does arc MPR make up. I'm going to take that percentage as a decimal, and I'm going to multiply it by 360 degrees. So what percentage of the circle does arc MPR make up? Well, that would be 11% plus 27% plus 30%, which is 68%. So I'm going to find 68% of 360 degrees. And the way I do that is I take 68% as a decimal, which is 0.68, multiply that by 360 degrees, and I get that the measure of arc MPR is going to be equal to 244.8 degrees.